So You Can Play That Game is proudly sponsored by NiceGameShop.com, the place to go for rare and unusual Asian games. Well, hi, my name is Rodney Smith. Uh, I am from the YouTube channel Watch It Played, where we teach and we play games, and I have, I have a funny accent because I'm from Canada. So, to my left. Hi guys, I'm uh, Paul, uh, myself and my wife Ming do a channel for, uh, called Skip the Rulebook and very similar sort of remit, right. uh, teaching, playing and generally uh, trying to make the hobby accessible. Interesting, so it makes sense that we're on this uh, panel together really. What about you? It's like it was fun. Yeah, what do you do? Like, like yeah. Yeah. Uh, well on Saturdays I clean the streets in Harrow. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> uh, so my name's Paul Grogan, I run the YouTube channel called Gaming Rules uh, where I create how to play videos of games. But I also work full time in the games industry, writing and editing rule books and running demo teams at conventions. So my entire life and job is all about teaching people how to play games in one media form or another. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm Michael from Two Can Play That Game. Again, another YouTube channel doing reviews, playthroughs, and teaching games. We're really out of our native element yeah. here though, right? Because like we can't do retakes. This is it, it's live. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when are you passing the script around? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, know, I, know. Yeah, I think probably more so than most of the YouTubers who do like reviews and stuff only. We're very much retakes. Yeah, yeah. Retakes, retakes, retakes. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Bloopers. But this is it, you're getting it live here. Um, I believe at one time this was going to be called Top Tips for Teaching, but we're, we decided we would scrap that and just change the rule. I mean, this is still about teaching games, don't worry. We're not suddenly going to be knitting or something. But um, <laughs> it is. It is good. We're just, how do you organize you know, the top ten? All these, these things are important, so we just thought we would try to put them in an the, order that would make sense kind of to talk about them, right? And I mean, one of the things that, I don't know, I'm assuming all of you are kind of obsessed with board games on some level or another and enjoy them, right? And I, I don't know, I've been really playing games for about seven years, seriously, I've been playing them all my life, but seriously for about seven years, and I still love getting that box in the mail or from the store or whatever and opening it up and all those awesome pieces in there and components and I get excited, I read the rules, it takes a couple of hours or whatever, you punch everything out, it's all, it's all fun. I still love all of those things. And by the end of that two hour, three hour period, I now have this game that I want to play. And so I tell my friends, come on over, let's go, let's play a game. And they come over and I'm excited, I've got the food out, we're going to play this awesome game. And then I realized, oh my gosh, they want to start playing in like 10 minutes. It took me like three hours to figure out how am I going to compress all of this into a package that they are going to want to listen to and then play the game, right? And so what we hope we can do is just share some tips and tricks that maybe we picked up along the way about how we, we go from making that a fun, you know, a good experience and avoiding kind of a more of a drudgery that the, uh, that the rule books can sometimes present to us, yeah. right? Because uh, it, it's, we've probably all had bad experiences at playing games because the person who was teaching it did a terrible job, right. well, for whatever reason. Has anyone had that experience? I'm assuming, yes? Yeah. Yes? Exactly. Okay. All right, good. Today. good. All right. Yeah. Today. <laughs> today. <laughs> today. Yes, today. So, when I taught a game today, was it? <laughs> so a, a bad teach, whether it's from you or somebody else, can not only spoil the game, it can spoil the experience. The hobby, um, yeah. The hobby can really, really be a problem. And as somebody who um, gets paid to demo games at conventions, if I, if I do a terrible job, not only will they then not buy the game, but they will have a bad impression about the game, a bad impression about the company or anything else. So even if it's just you sitting with your friend teaching them how to play, or if it's me you know, at Essen teaching people how to play a new game, the teach is a very important thing. Does anyone ever get nervous about teaching a game? Yeah, like me too, right? Like it's, it feels like all the burdens on you. So hopefully some of the things that we talk about in here will kind of help reduce that feeling of panic or nervousness that you might have about presenting to people a game. So we have, we have uh, some different tips, and we have about five of them here, maybe some bonus ones at the end, but we'd like to kind of keep it a bit interactive if possible. So after each tip, we'll just open it up to you guys, and if there's something you'd like to ask or you have a story to share, feel free. But the first one here, we've titled Sharing the Hotness versus sh being a hot mess, okay? So you want to share that great new game, but you don't want it to be a disaster. What, what's a way you can do that? And I think what this is really meant to represent is how can you be prepared to teach a game? And I, I think this is a kind of a silly one in a way, but it's really been important for me, is there's a big difference between feeling prepared and actually being prepared to teach a game. Because a lot of people who have maybe taught me a game and not done so great a job, or even myself when I haven't done a very good job, it's because, you know, maybe I, I skimmed over the rules quickly, I maybe played the game three months ago, someone taught me the game and I had a good time playing. What I'm really prepared to do is have fun. I'm not really prepared yeah. to 
teach yeah. anyone else so they can have fun. You know what I mean? I just want to get in there and have that, that game experience. I, I think it's important to note that isn't you need to have memorized the rule book nope. and right. like all the setup and stuff, but you need to be prepared to kind of know where to look in the rule mm -hmm. book to tell people things. You, you can't sit there for an hour going, hang on, hang on, I'll find this, I'll find this. Yeah. That is a common misconception. Is people think, oh right, I need to know exactly every single rule of this game right. from the rule book, otherwise people are going to think bad of me. No. If you don't know the special setup for a three player game off your top of your head, that's fine. But as long as you know where it is in the rule book for yes, that, yeah. then you, you, you can turn to it. And, that, and that's No, fine. agreed. I mean, I, I think there's a few things you should probably do. You probably should read the rules through at least once. <laughs> yeah. That's a good thing, start and finish. You know. Watch one of our videos. Yeah. Watch it. Somebody, you know, I didn't even have that on here, but that's, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> if someone else has already done a teach, you know, go ahead and, and, and watch it just to get a sense of how you might, might want to teach it. I, I think setting up the game in front of you on the table, uh, so I know some friends of mine, though, and I've tried to do this too sometimes, just read from the rule book. And, and get it that way, but it really helps to set things up on the table and move things around a little bit as you're learning. Do you yeah, know I was going to say, I don't, what, I don't know if you guys I do tend this. to do is play a game on my own, playing the multiple pieces, mm -hmm. yeah. kind of just for a few turns or whatever, or if it's got like different stages or whatever. Do you win? <laughs> uh, <laughs> depends which me you're Yeah, okay, right, right, sure, sure. <laughs> no, I was going to say exactly the yeah, same thing. I mean, then. If it's not necessarily even playing the game, but simply just sort of pushing things around on the table, so you're like, oh, okay, so that, that, that's where that one goes. And that one. I mean, we were talking earlier on about the, um, the difference between the, the description of what's in the rule book of what something should be and actually where you find it on the board versus what that card actually, how that fits into that space. And it's simple little things that can be helped just by just putting things in front of you and seeing how things flow. Yeah, so, I mean, it's having that familiarity there. Yeah. It's the idea. I think Getting yourself familiar with the rules, with the components, and how they combine. I, one of the things that I've found has been helpful, especially if I feel like, okay, I'm going to go teach a bunch of people how to play a game, is I will teach an imaginary crowd of people how to play the game. Uh, it sounds a bit silly, but I'll just sit there at the table, I'll pretend, okay, if I was going to start teaching this right now, if they all just showed up now, how would I do it? And I'll start talking out loud, okay, well, here's how you set up the table, here's how some of the rules go. And what I normally will find is there'll be something I don't remember, I'll repeat something, I'll stumble over something, and the reason this is such a good exercise is because as you goof up, you realize I was about to launch this version of the teach on my friends. Like this is what they were about to experience, was me tripping over myself. And so even though it might seem a little bit silly, it is good to kind of go, all right, I'm just going to teach out loud. And it's really good to do it out loud, because once you start talking and verbalizing it, that's where you really recognize what you're forgetting, what you See, don't I've know. I've not actually tried that before. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Practice makes perfect. It does. So. I, I find it helps me anyway. And it also kind of makes me feel confident. If you have that feeling of, I'm not confident I can do this, you get to the whole thing, you're like, oh, I think, I think I've got this. Or I know where my weaknesses are, and I'll just strengthen those things up. Yeah. yeah. But when you're doing it, yes, this is a question, do you do the voice? <laughs> <laughs> do I have a voice? We all have a voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all have a camera voice. I think I do. As soon as I'm teaching a game, I sort of put on a, yeah, a certain I, I, voice. Yeah, and I'm the same. And, and, and because I spend a lot of my time at home doing the voice, <laughs> sometimes when I'm talking to my partner, she has to go, you're doing the when I'm when I'm when I'm talking about what we're doing and okay, going okay, down the shops like or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so she says just just stop doing the. It's like when I wake up in the morning and say hi, my name's Paul Grogan, and in this gaming rules, no, yeah, that, that's, 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 that's going that's that's to be doing too many videos at that point. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyone have any, have any thoughts about about that, or any tips that they do to prepare for uh, playing a game? If not, we can move on to the next tip. But does that sound sort of like some good good advice generally? Yeah. The disadvantage is yeah. that takes time. We're asking you right. to take your time on your own and learn that game for the benefit of your friends. So there is, there is that. And we're all busy and people generally don't have as much time as they like. But it depends how you want to deliver that. If you want yeah. your, to not look like an idiot or make mistakes <laughs> in front of your friends, right. then this is something that we strongly recommend you yeah. get the game and out, set it up, important. read point. through it. Yeah, I, I'm, glad, I'm glad you said that because one of the things I wrote down here was just the, um, you know, you're right, you're giving up time. Mm -hmm. But your friend's time is also valuable, right? Yeah. And the time you have together playing, you want to be spending that as efficiently as possible, yeah. having fun, and right? And <laughs> not doing that. So yeah. a little front loaded time is, is helpful later, I think. And I think as long as you kind of spread out amongst your friends who's getting the game, who's teaching it, it'll oh, all balance me. out. Yeah. Well, yeah, you love doing it. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> 
So I, th I think yeah. I was, was going to say as well. Um, I mean, as much as you've got to have stuff in front of you and, and, and do that, make the first time. Um, I do find that sometimes uh, having your sort of subconscious uh, chewing over questions. I mean, um, try and ask yourself questions about the game. Try and uh, you know, trying to anticipate. Well, yeah. what what could somebody ask me about this card or this token? And I think well. Do I actually know the answer to that? And if the answer to that is no, well then you, you rough out the rule book, you, you have a look. And um, I think by by sort of interrogating yourself, um, mm. sort of in the, you know, between the time where you've actually taken it out and the time you're actually turning on teaching it, yeah. you, you've got that sort of, okay, I can dash back and have a look at that now just to make sure that by the time we get there that I've tried to cover all of those, what might seem like sort of very small questions, but could yeah. put a big roadblock in it. Yeah. I like that. I, I think maybe yourself. that's yeah. what Rodney was getting at with the whole practicing, that it, it forces you to do that. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I like that, interrogating yourself. Yeah, uh, questions. What you've said just so echo really, that's exactly yep. what I've got. I've made all that on the table and I've played through certain things. If I do X, what, what happens next and follow that through. But rule books aren't necessarily always perfect and sometimes there's a lot of right. gray areas. How, how do you, I mean, I end up then trying to look through that before Game Geek and general forums. Is, is that yeah, I assume, yeah. is everyone familiar with the website Board Game Geek? Um, it's, it's an excellent resource for that, you're right, because you can go look up every game and generally, when people have questions, they'll go there in the forums and post post those yeah. questions, right? And hopefully, you'll get an answer from uh, hopefully well, an authoritative often answer. From, yeah. Often from the designer, yeah. because most of them are on there yeah. and watching those, so that's pretty good. Do your friends appreciate it when you put in that time? Well, I'm the one who puts in all the time. Yeah. Yeah. The reason why I'm sat here, I'm not. <laughs> 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 you, you were hoping for a short. They really need to be here, not you, but it's yeah. yeah. I'm the leader in terms of board games. Yeah. So but they um, should appreciate that yeah. because it, it is your time, your effort, and everything else yeah. in order to make sure that they have. Have a better experience. Food and snacks and a lot of drinks helps as well. It does. It does good, right? <laughs> yeah. Did you have a question as well? Yes, I do. I don't know your comedy at all, but how did you know that you know how to play this game properly? Because one thing if you you, you never do, you never do. Yeah, that's a yeah. great answer. Yeah, what was it? You never do. Never yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> because and you get a rule book and you read through a rule book and you think, oh okay, yeah, that rule book's fine. And then it turns out you're playing a rule wrong because it wasn't clear in the rule book and you'd interpreted it one way and, and things or like that. you just so, forgot a rule. Yeah, there, right. there's a, pretty much whenever you're teaching a game, there's always going to be one thing you get wrong. Yeah. At the very least, if not more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not more. sure. Yeah. Right. As a friend of mine at home, uh, Robert, he's a, he's a great friend of mine, and one thing that Robert does is every time I've taught him how to play a game, yes. he goes away and reads the rule book. Now, some people might think that's insulting. Robert is one of the best friends I've got. No, because that's really more, helpful. More than half the time, he sends me an email the day afterwards and yeah. says, Paul, just read the rule book for this game, and we got this bit wrong. <laughs> Without him, I, I wouldn't have spoke that. And it's, it's brilliant. And that's a really good point, yeah. yeah. It's always good to have a second person to bounce yes. it off. I mean, I'm looking at, Ming generally does that for me. So, and and um, if I'm playing with somebody else who has explained, I'm one of those annoying people who will actually sit while we're playing the game with the rule book open. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't trust anything. <laughs> <Yeah. Sorry. laughs> the, the trouble with a lot of these rules is that the designer has got a certain thing in mind, and when they write down the rule, they've only got that version of it in mind and they don't always see that it could be read in a couple of different ways and I think you only have to spend two minutes on Reddit to see that actually there's about 15 different ways of playing the same right. game and every person is claiming that their way is the right way. Um, what I have found though, and this was before I started doing the show, is there's an awful lot of these companies, an awful lot of designers actually don't mind you emailing the, uh, to, to just clarify things and I think a lot of people yeah. get scared of doing that. Um, uh, but uh, very often they've got sort of you know uh, FAQ or, or, or info um, email addresses you can you can go to and um, yeah. we were saying earlier about some of these companies actually having uh, living FAQs and and, uh, and and basically just they I think the better ones realise that they're not always going to have done the perfect job mm -hmm. with the rule book and they realise that there will always be confusion um, so they will for the most part, try and put in place resources that you can go to to, to double check these things. So right. Some companies have uh, individuals who basically subscribe to all of their games on BGG, so whenever there is any rules question that crops up on BGG about any of their games, that person will go on there and try and answer it. Yeah. Me, CG. That's, that's one of the things that I do at CG. I think, just to, to sort of cap off your question too, though, I think that you can never, under, uh, you can never over prepare, but you can definitely under prepare. So it'll never be perfect, but if you put the effort in as much as you can, I think that's all I can ask of you, really. You know, um, should we go on to tip number two? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, this one is called timing is everything. All right. The importance of knowing when the right time is to drop a new game 
on people, you know? And I think this is one of the ones that you sort of highlighted for yeah, us. Yeah, you because, wanna... you know, if you've got a game night, you've got two hours, you're not going to bring out a game like Twilight Imperium. Well, some people will, that's people. the problem. Will. Yeah. yeah, some people will. It, again, this kind of keys into that preparation. You need to understand the game, how long it's actually going to take to play, and don't trust boxes. Frankly. And don't trust yourself. I, I honestly, none of my friends ever estimate correctly how long it's going to take. Because yeah. they remember playing, they had a good time, someone else taught them, maybe. Yeah. And they don't remember exactly how long the whole process took. So. <laughs> yeah, that, that estimate on the box is always, uh, for me, I think you look at that and you think, okay, well that is if you've got a group who all know how to play yes. and they've played it perfectly, yeah. that's the time it will take. Yeah. If, you, if it's the first time you've played, I mean, prepare, be prepared double to double or triple, triple it, it even. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, particularly if you've got more than one person. Time, time, let alone the teaching time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. some games like um, Terraforming Mars can take like an hour to teach, right? <laughs> which is a lot of time. So you kind of got to be aware. I mean, again, this kind of keys into what Rodney was saying about if you do a practice teach, you'll know how long it's going to take yeah, yeah. to teach to then know you're going to have time to do that in the night. Yeah, yeah I think sometimes though that, that, that when you get a new game and it's in front of you, you're like, I really want to crack that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the problem, right? the, the, lure, <laughs> yeah. the allure of getting into that new game. And I think you sort of need to know your audience a little bit too. Are all the people at this table really going to be in for that heavy game of whatever, Terra Mystic or whatever, or is this more the, you just finished a bunch of party games and now you're trying to sort of launch this next heavy game on them. It's, you, you need to know your audience there, I think, mm -hmm. a little bit. I also like to, um, if, if this is especially good if you have a game group, I think, and you have different tables that people can play at. I will warn the people at my table before I get started, this game is going to take about an hour to teach, uh, maybe, um, or it's going to be it's going to be heavier or more involved. Feel free to leave. This yeah. is your chance to escape yeah. now. Don't feel obligated to sit here. You're not going to offend me. I will, I will be miserable if I think you're miserable, so let's not do that to each other. Yeah. You know, give people an excuse to leave. If you kind of launch into it and drop it on the table, you're not really giving people, and then sometimes people have a hard time leaving, you yeah. know, because they feel like, oh, I don't, don't offend yeah. Rodney in this game, he really wants to play, type of thing, right? So, uh, people don't come. worry about offending Did you get to that thing, though, where you've, uh, you've had that spiel, you've said all that, and then you get sort of maybe 45 minutes in, and you get to that point, you think, Maybe they've only just now realized what yeah. they're yeah. when you see yes. people's faces just kind of <laughs> glossing over and it's like, yeah, they're not, they're not registering anything anymore. I think it's, it's okay to self-eject, too. I mean, don't leave them with the game and leave. I mean, just like, <laughs> but to just say, you know what, I think I've made a terrible mistake. I'm going to own this. This is not the right time. I can see people's eyes are glazing over. Let's, let's pack this away. Let's get something out. Is that okay with everyone? You know, and then if the, if the consensus is that you were right, then maybe you get to save yourself again, right, from that. Um, I, I think maybe it would be practical to get into some sort of how to teach games more, and maybe in more mm -hmm. practical terms. So one of the things we had here next to is what to explain first or what to explain at all when you're, when you're teaching a game, right? Uh, I think this is something that you're going to have some interesting things to talk yes. about, given all the demos that you've, you've yeah. done, yeah. Uh, Paul. But I think this is kind I of an kind important of the difference thing. difference between teaching a game to friends and demoing as yes. well. Yeah. yeah. And, and the crossovers. And and I mean, yeah, when, yeah when, you're, when you're explaining a game, and again, this is one thing I've learned, is I've... I've a number of my friends who've tried to teach me how to play the games, stress the word try, um, is, is realizing where they're going wrong. And not just for me, because I'm really fussy, but everybody at the table, when they say, right, in this game, you can do four possible actions. What? Well, I have no idea about the game at all. I don't know right. what it is. And the first thing you've told me is that I can do one of four possible actions. For no. what purpose? A exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so start with very, very high level approach. Right, yeah. in this game, we're going to be doing such and such a thing. Right, so get people in with the theme or whatever. And then how you win. So the winner of the game is the one with the most points. There's many, many ways you can get points in this game, but you've got to have the most to win. Right, so get in how to win early. And basically then start, the game is going to last for eight rounds. Each round comprises of three phases. Right, get that in early. And then say in each phase you can do one of four actions. Right. Bang. Yeah. So it's and getting those top level ones first. Like a pyramid effect. Yeah. You start with the highest level information and then you break it down into more and more detail as mm -hmm. you go along. I mean, I was getting a demo of one game from somebody, I don't know, a couple of months ago, and we were five minutes in to the introduction, and I went, Is this a cooperative game? And he went, Yeah. <laughs> right, and you had no idea. I had no idea. He just assumed that we knew it was a cooperative game. Yes. And I had no idea. And suddenly I was like, Ah. And so, again, don't assume that the people sitting down know that and, and make sure you get in those, those key things at the start. You know, I, I like that you said um, when you teach a game, you'll, you'll start with kind of theme. Mm -hmm. too, for, because oftentimes I'll hear people say, start with the objective first. And I almost 
never do that now. Right. I start with a theme because I want people to be kind of invested in yeah. what we're doing. And I try to personalize. I say, you know, we're generals at a table. We're about to head off to a war. You, you do this in your videos as well. I do this. Just try to set yeah, a little yeah. bit of theme just to give people a reason to even want to be, you know, because the fun part is not going to be the rules, really, so much, unless you're not like some mm -hmm. of us for the rules. Yeah. The fun part is going to be what we're doing. Yes, yes, yes. especially <laughs> like spotter games, right? But, but being able to sort of lay out what we're doing, what's, what's the, the fun part of the activity that we're going to be doing. We're survivors on an island, we're going to collect food and resources, we've got to build a raft, we've got to get off of this thing before, you know, we are attacked by animals or whatever. And then, so the objective is, you know, and then you lay that out and then break it down. Yeah. I think that's, that's good to engage people with theme. Yeah. Well, I think games in recent years have uh, made an increasing effort to, to really give you a rich theme as well, haven't they? So that mm -hmm. kind of becomes easier uh, with some more modern games. Right, take advantage of that. Absolutely, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think, what, I think what that kind of keys into the next point, really. So, I mean, do you want to talk about the differences, Paul, between the demoing? Yeah, so yeah. about four years ago, I decided that I was fed up of hearing all of these stories from people who'd had terrible demos. I mean, specifically, we're talking big conventions like Essen and Gen Con and things like that. And I, I spent two years researching this. And I say researching, I wasn't sat away in a lab. I was just <laughs> reading forum post after forum post on BGG, Facebook groups and everything about terrible demos that people had had at conventions. And I decided I was going to come up with a demo style for use at conventions. And I did it on my own for about a year. And then I started putting it out with other people. CGE have now adopted this as their demo style for all of their big events. And last year at Gen Con I had a team of 45 people all using my demo style on 35 tables. So I'm very pleased with it, I'm very proud yeah. of it because I, I know it works and it's there because of all of this research and everything else. And the method is, it's like the Paul Grogan's interactive drip feed method. I, I've got a long name for okay. it, right? Because I can't think of a short one. Let's workshop that, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But basically... <laughs> it is a good method, yeah. It's, and, I, and I did it earlier on. I can get you playing through the ages within one minute. Right. Yeah. And it's the most com one of the most complicated games out there. And within a minute you'll be playing it. But you won't necessarily be playing it well. Because you will you don't not be know playing it well at all. Um, so the point is, for if you're at a busy convention and you want a demo of something, and if you ever get a demo of any game from us at CG, we will be playing the game within two or three minutes. Your first game is a learning game. Don't worry, try to win, but don't worry about winning. Don't worry about making the wrong move because you're probably going to, even if you know all of the rules. Yeah. Right off the first game is a learning game. Most people learn best by doing. There are three main ways people learn, but the doing is apparently the most common uh, and the best way. So let's just start playing as soon as possible. And what we do is we start playing and we teach you the rules as we go along. However, this doesn't mean that I keep everything secret until the right time. So if we take Tol Tolkien, for example. Tolkien is a game which is divided into four quarters and at the end of each quarter you have to feed your people. Do I wait until the first quarter happens? So, oh, right, now you need to feed your people. Right, no, I, it's no be told sooner. because yeah. that leads to a bad player experience, right. okay? Do I tell them they need to feed their people on round one before they've even placed their first worker? No. So it's all about giving them the right information at the right time, not necessarily at the very start, but not necessarily spring it on them when it happens, but at the right time. Now that demo method was adopted for demos at conventions. Do not use it with your friends. Right. However, yeah. I now have a halfway house where I do something with some of my friends. It depends. It's up to them. Because it, it, some, some people are going to be like, I want to know everything, everything. before we get started, right? Yeah. And yeah. so if you're with your friends, it's a, di it's a slightly different situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You control the environment. But in a demo experience, you're trying to get people in. And demo experience, experience it, right? absolutely. But the, yeah, I've, I've been adapting the method over the last couple of years, and there are parts of it that I now so So when I teach Agra, uh, I could sit there for probably 45, 50 minutes and tell you every rule of Agra. And you probably will fall asleep after 15. And you I, won't know everything. And you won't and know everything. Realize you won't. You, you will have remember. forgotten yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. in Agra, for those people who know it, the final tiered resources, each of them, once you've got them, have a special ability. I mentioned that at the start of the game. I don't mention what each one of those special abilities does. Because right. you're not going to get them until two hours into the game. Or an hour and a half into the game. So I'll mention that they have special abilities. And then, at some point in the game, when people are getting near that point, I'll say, you know, you know I said that each of them has special abilities. Right, well, I'll now go through them. And yeah, sure, somebody might say, oh, well, if I'd have known that the pajamas did that, <laughs> right. then an hour ago, I would have gone into this. It's a learning game, right? I think that's the thing you've got to emphasize. It. So yeah. the practical thing you can take away from that, whether you're demoing or not, is 
tell like this is a learning game. This, the points don't matter. There's no trophy at the end. Yeah. You know, yeah. We'll, we're we're all friends. Hopefully, we'll get back again next week. We can really go. It, it, it really it really matters. Of course, whoever wins the first game, it will matter to them. But <laughs> everyone else, it's just a learning game. Yeah. You know, and that's really important for both the person teaching and the people who are trying to play. Yeah. Yeah. I think right. And I think like Paul said there about people learn by doing. I think it's important for you to know your friends and know how they learn, whether it is by doing, by reading, by seeing. You know, so that you can tailor your teaching experience mm -hmm. to your friends and how they do learn. You know, if they are very much, I'm not going to listen, be able to take in the rules from you just telling me I need to play through, yeah. then you might as well go straight into yeah. the demo yeah. system. And if they say, well, as Rodney said, some people are going to be, no, I need to know everything before I start, otherwise I'm not going to know what to do. You know, th those are two very mm -hmm. extremes and it's about knowing the people and balancing what you're doing to those people. Yeah. And over my experiences, certainly at Gen Con, when we sit down and we say, right, the way we run demos at CG is that we're going to start playing as soon as possible, we give them that spiel. And a few people say, ah, that could, could we know everything from the start? And I say, sorry, that's, that's not how we do things at CG. And they go, oh, right, right, okay, go on then. Every single one of them at the end went, thank you very much. That I didn't right. think that was going to work, yeah. and it did. So I'm not trying to convince you that it works, I know for a fact it does yeah. work because we've done it now for years with hundreds of people. Yeah. But a lot of people don't think it does work until they actually experience it. Mm. But I think so. the key thing is there, you're not teaching the game, you're... Well, you are. You're, no, you're letting them un know the experience. You wouldn't expect them to walk away from that and be able to go teach someone else, for example. No, but they would know to every know rule the of the game. Yeah, by, by the end, by the end, end, yeah, end they would know every rule yeah. of the game. It's spreading out. Yeah. I think the other thing you can do is always have a practice round. I, I never, yeah. I'm never against that. And yeah. Some, yeah. some groups won't want to do that, maybe. But if you just say, okay, we're going to do the first round together, and then everything face up on the table, and then we're going to reset. But now you all know kind of what you're doing. You have a chance to make that terrible mistake that would have ruined the entire game. You know, like, oh, no, I've totally <laughs> yeah. messed up yeah. here. You don't have to live with it. We reset, you know. Or maybe everyone's kind of like, okay, no, that first round was fine. I feel comfortable. We can just proceed from mm -hmm. here. So that's another kind of practical way of dealing with that. Yeah. Um, we've got uh, another tip here. Um, this is tip for a captive audience or a captivated audience. Because when you're teaching people, you're hopefully going to try to keep them engaged in some way. You guys are very captivated. We've closed the doors even. <laughs> uh, uh, so you're a captive audience as well. But the idea is how do you stay engaging? You know, how do you hold people's attention? If you are maybe going to have to go and do maybe an info dump of about 15 minutes or 20 minutes or more yeah. at the beginning, how do you keep people's attention? Yeah, and That's I think this right? is where that theme really can help. Yeah. Really, because if you can key into the theme and make it exciting and not just make it as you say, kind of this dry. You move walls these three cubes. Th three cubes. Remember, three cubes. Move them from there to there. Why? Yeah. Just, just move them. From, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think people people love their name, right? Like, and I think if you're if you're teaching someone and you can use practical examples as you're going and yeah. use people's names, it kind of also if they're starting to drift, they hear their name like, what, what's this now? Yeah. Like, you know, like so. It, George, why don't you move the piece over there? If you did that, it would do this. Or Mary, if you do that, you know, you can kind of get people involved that way. Obviously, I think sometimes elevating your voice is helpful. Yeah. So yeah. you're kind of the loudest thing at the table. Can, is, anything that bad? I think that kind of enhances your presence and draws the yeah. attention and focus to oh, you is. and away from like mobile phones or whatever. Yeah. It's going to help. You know, it might help to stand up. Oh yeah, I'm not against standing up. You stand up. up. Everyone sort of like yeah. you know, you're Focused suddenly you. gets yeah. the and attention, it, right? And it makes it easier to kind of point key. to various. <laughs> Three days of standing up. Over the table as well yeah. and stuff. You're not so all going to have a stage like this, so sometimes, yeah, standing yeah. up is, yeah. a, is a good idea, right? So I use humour a lot. Um, my sense of humour is, is, is very typically British, and I, and I push it <laughs> to the extent. So a good example that I give of my sense of humour is I went into a shop once, and I was starving. I was so, so hungry, right? And I got this sandwich, and I went to pay for it, and there was this big cube. So I couldn't wait. So I ate half of the sandwich while I was in the queue. And I got to the till and I said, can I have a discount, please? Because somebody's had half my sandwich. <laughs> That's my sense of humor. Right. It's so obviously a joke, yeah, yeah except no. Uh, she went to get the manager. I said, no, 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 and I felt awful. <laughs> so I, I throw in my sense of humor during my demos, possibly a little too much at times. And I wasn't sure, the first time I started doing demos at Gen Con right. and Origins, I wasn't sure how it would go down with the American crowd. So I'm running a demo of adrenaline, and this guy's got this weapon, and he says, well, what does this bit do? And I went, I don't know, it's an experimental weapon. There's a red button on it. Do you want to press it? <laughs> and he looked at me, and he was like, do you not know what it does? And I went, 
No, he said, like, yeah, just press it, see what happens. And the other players go, go on, press it, press it, press it. <laughs> He's like, uh, I'll press it. And I told him what he did. Now, that might sound crazy. I knew what it did. I knew course, yeah. that it was going to have a good effect on him. I wouldn't have let him press it and then, oh, sorry, you're dead. Right. right? Uh -huh. So it's not just being silly, it's actually thinking about it and realizing. They do say comedy is timing. Yes. Right? So that's, that's important. And what he did is the other players were joining in, and it was fun, and he pressed it, and he killed somebody, and he was like, oh, yeah! And it worked. Yeah. So it's, but it's knowing when to do it and, and when not to do it. But, you know, throwing in little bits of humor along the way, I think really, really helps. Yeah, and, and these are all like free tools, you know what I mean? You have access to that. Yeah. Smiling, looking happy about what you're doing, you know, all those things can kind of help draw people into the, to these the game, this rules thing, yeah. you have to get them to just, it, right? just having an energy to yourself yeah. and an excitement about the game. Whereas if you're like, yeah, and you're going to do this, and uh, oh yeah, and then this, it, people aren't going to be interested. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas if you're going, right, and then we get to do this, and this will mean you can do this, you're going to be much more interested in someone reacting that way. And having it be thematic and not just the moving of the pieces mm -hmm. as right. well, you know, it, it does make a difference. Yeah, I mean, demoing of larger games is a joy because a lot of larger games have got um, rules in there that are mechanical rules, but there's a good thematic explanation and usually with sense of humor. Right. And the amount of times that I have demoed Dungeon Pets, both in, in Essen for a general German crowd and in America, and I said, look, gold can't go shopping on its own. You know why? It hasn't got any legs. Look. And everybody laughs. Right. Straight right. out of the rule book. It's not my joke at all. Yeah, I get yeah. the credit for it. But <laughs> that it's, works, right? It's larger. And it's like, and it keeps them engaged and it keeps them in there. And people go, ah, gold. You can't go shopping on its own with. Well, they remember the joke. They remember, right? they remember the, the joke. The joke and therefore, they remember the rule. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good job. That's so. like, you, you practice round as well. We were talking about before, and, and, and probably with, with the demos and that as well. Um, giving somebody buy-in and giving somebody sort of a, a role and a, a position within the game also sort of helps them to maintain that focus. If I mean, if you were just okay, you're going to be a player. You're going to control this character. You're going to move him here. here. That's it's not it's not the greatest sort of setting. But if you say okay, you are this wizard. You are going on this quest, and you're doing suddenly they're yes. like oh, okay, okay. So how do I do that then? And, I've got you know, you, to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. So that sense of, um, you know, there, I've got a reason now to actually pay attention to the ne th next thing that's said. Right. And, um, you know, the, I suppose uh, with, with the practice round, there, there is um, a, an element of, of dependent on the, the, the game length. You know, if you have something that is epically length, if you're playing a game of civilization, you need to know from the start that whatever you do is going to actually affect have this impact, bigger yeah. Yeah. picture yeah. that you're going to end up building. So, yeah, yeah, trying to get people uh, to, to, to have ownership of it, I think, yeah. Yeah, I think there's also an element of how you structure your teaching and what you do and don't include that can make a difference. Because as you were saying, you know, you can do the big long spiel at the beginning, mm -hmm. but people aren't necessarily going to remember that. Yeah. Whereas if you tell them just what they need to know to get going, it can make a big difference. Yeah. Because you're talking, right, here's a little bit of information, let's get on with it. Anything comes up, we can explain it, or I'll explain it just before it does come up. It just makes it quicker and shorter, and people have limited attention spans, hence people playing with games out there. Yeah. <laughs> and, look, and honestly, and people will, I mean, this kind of takes to the, the fifth tip here is, people will say you didn't t tell them something that you did, yeah. you know, they'll, so yeah. how do, the, the, the fifth tip here is how do we chill under the heat, so the importance of having like a kind of a good temperament as you're teaching games, because you will have some people at the table who are, you know, they're just a little distracted mm -hmm. while you're doing stuff, yeah. and then they're not remembering a rule you taught. Or maybe you have someone at the table who's just asking a lot of questions. Yeah. Like yeah. They, and, and you know you answered it, but they, they just aren't getting it. Mm -hmm. And I think you kind of have to just have a very even keel, <laughs> patient <laughs> temperament as much as possible. Yeah. I think always, right? Because otherwise, you're just going to cause frustration for the other person and yourself. And people can feel that at a, at a table. Mm -hmm. They think they can kind of feel that tension building, and there's not, no fun's going to come from that no. at the end of it. I mean, one of my worst experiences. Uh, and for anybody who's listened to podcast 50, whatever it was, um, Sidereal Confluence about three weeks ago, and it's so fresh in my mind, but it was yes. one of the worst experiences I had. It was five friends. We all know each other. We're all friends. Right. And the guy teaching the game, I see three times a week. He's a good friend. People were at each other's throats. There was shouting. There was swearing at the really? table during the okay. It was a yeah. horrible, horrible experience. And it was all down to the teach. The teach was so bad. Yeah. And he was getting frustrated, he was getting angry, and he was like, just be there, and he was swearing. And, then, and it was just, what we should have done after 45 minutes, as I said, tell you what, forget it, and put it away and play something yeah. else. We didn't. 
we pushed through and it was the wrong thing to do and it just got worse and worse. And people were nearly fall, fell out over it and yeah. it was just, yeah. And he wasn't patient at all. He's not here, he was gonna be here, but he forgot. Um, <laughs> and he just, he wasn't patient and he was losing his rank. And what that meant is that the people who hadn't understood what he said and then when he repeated it, and he was getting angry with them because he was having to repeat it. Yeah, it just makes you more embarrassed. He just, it yeah. was a spiral. I, I think there is also a kind of leading by example mm -hmm. there, isn't there? If you're the one teaching the game, you need to be as engaged, etc., as you want other people to yeah. be. You need to, if you want everyone else to treat you calmly and to deal with you in the way that you want to be dealt with, you need to project the same yeah. outwardly. And, and the person maybe who's just not getting it, you know, uh, it's always better to sort of just sort of suffer through with them because most likely they won't want to play it the next time anyway. You know, so yeah, yeah. the problem will solve itself in the long run. But for now, you're all together. The whole idea of this gaming thing is it's a social experience we're doing together. So you try to do the best that you can. And yeah. sometimes you'll have someone just the game's not going to be for them. Yeah. You know, and it's not your job to make them like it. That's the other thing yeah. too, right? You might have some at the table and they're just not really enjoying it. And maybe it's your favorite game, you kind of have to let that go a little bit and just uh, try your best to, to get everyone else on board that you can. Yeah, it's also now not a bad thing. Thick skin there. Yeah, a little thick yeah. skin is good. Um, it's also not a bad idea to confess your limitations. If someone says, like, I think you forgot this rule, don't get super defensive about it. Just go, yeah, maybe I did, you know, and, and let them know, okay, maybe I missed something there. Sorry about that, and apologize and move on. The more defensive you get, the more defensive they get, you know, it just kind of builds. It's sort of, I guess, basic human nature stuff, but it comes yeah, up in our yeah. games anyway. Yeah. Well, I was teaching Via Nebula to a, a family of three that attended my local gaming group uh, a few weeks ago. So a mother, two sons, 18 and 16, and we sat down and we taught Via Nebula, and I thought, I've not played this in a year, but I'm sure it's all right. And I got there and we did it, and then we got to the end scoring and I went, oh yeah, resources you have left on your tiles are negative points at the end of the game. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, but that's why you put an asterisk yeah, next yes. to the game. I forgot, <laughs> forgot to mention that, uh, and they were fine with it. And I said, look, really sorry, I forgot that. If you'd have known that, me and you wouldn't have done that thing that we did at the end that cost us three points each. Yeah. And it was absolutely fine. Now, thankfully, that was yes. at the end of the game, and it hadn't affected the experience. If it was a middle of the game, oh, something's just happened, and I forgot, and you're completely screwed. Sure, people might have different yeah, reactions. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think one thing to remember with all of this is that the rule book is not poisonous. You know, if, if you are the person who is supposed to know how to play, touching the rule book and picking it up and looking through to check things, it's not meaning that you're admitting any kind it's of It's not confession of guilt. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> That's right. If anything, what you're saying is that actually, you know, it, the rule book is something that you should probably be going yes. back to regularly. Yeah. Just to make just, you know, you, just because you've read it, just because you in theory know how to play, that's there as a reference for you. I mean, it's, as we said at the beginning, it's it's not about memorizing no, that no, no, book no. and knowing it off by heart. This, it's about knowing where to go yeah. to find and this what idea of confluence teach that we had. He didn't look at the rule book once. He knew the entire game, including every single race and every single ability of every single race, and he knew it all off by heart. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the worst teachers I've ever had. Right. So knowing the game is not a guarantee. You know, it's Absolutely. great if you can do that, but it, it isn't everything. Those were kind of our main five things. We have some other bonus things as our time runs out here. But does anyone have any comments or questions that you'd like to ask now? Yeah. I would mention player aids for the good and the bad, because I'm a visual learner, so I like having that. But don't give it to me too early, because like, uh, like I warn you in PowerPoint presentations, mm -hmm. your audience is reading it. Yes, so that's a good point. So yeah, have I taught you how to play Pulsar 2849? No. no. Okay. No, it wasn't you, it was that right. I, I don't give the player aid until the start of round two or three. Yeah, just in case you didn't hear it. Do you prefer to have the player No, because you're reading it and you're not listening. Just, just in case anyone well, the back didn't well, hear. So the comment was just, uh, player aids are available online for people to use, right? And so if you can get those, sometimes they're available on Board Game Geek or from the publisher. Handing those out can help. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, sometimes so, handing them out early yeah. can create another problem yeah. where people are reading this this You're kind of preview. giving people a distraction. Yeah. 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 I, I guarantee my Pulsar demo is one of those drip feed, I'll teach you the rules as we go, but you're right. Giving them the nine step turn sequence when they're just looking at that, when half of it is irrelevant. Have, have you ever been handed a, your hand of cards at the beginning of the game before the game's been taught? What do you do as soon as you get those? Yeah, exactly. You just, oh, yeah, what's this? And, and so you're, you, you can't help but want to look at the pictures, mm -hmm. read the effects, what does this effect do? And suddenly your head's full of questions that it's not time to be <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> so I will be a little bit stern sometimes. I'm like, I'm giving you your, your hand of cards here, but just leave them on the table. Don't we'll look we'll at get it, to yeah. those in a moment, right? Just to try to keep people, uh, keep people's attention there. Yeah. Anything else? Any other? Yeah. I'll, I'll do two things. Yes. Um, depending on the group I'm with, uh, I'll send them some homework or send them a video on YouTube. 
these two. Right. Yeah. 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 Watch the decipher. Yeah. Then we'll discuss it afterwards. Yeah. Or I'll take it, depending on the game, it's a fairly complex game, then I'll pick out some scenarios that have caused me to have a lot of questions. Right. And I'll do like a quick piece out on the board just to show what those scenarios is and how they can interact because I'm a visual person. Um, and just kind of yeah, brilliant. Sit, let's see how that might play out if they were able to reach that portion. Yeah. Yeah. You're just picking up on your first point and going back to what you said earlier on. If one of us four or anybody else has done a video for the game that you're going to play, send everybody the link. Uh, they won't watch it. Uh, well, no. Some, some, some way. But if you get one or two, it's a couple other people who can be helpful at the table yeah. when other people are having trouble. So I think it's a great. And it's certainly, pressure, it? certainly I, I know our, our two, I think you do it as well. Our videos are scripted. Yeah. I spend probably about two to two and a half days writing the script before I even press record on the video camera. Um, I've spent all of that time in writing the script, rewriting the script, testing the script on unsuspecting victims, uh, Vicky at home, Yes. Um, <laughs> to make sure that I have delivered the entire rules of how to play in the most clear and concise and structured order. I've done all that work. You don't need to do it again. Yeah, it some some, some people, yeah, it I've, done it, I've done it with, with you, yeah. I don't know if you know this, but uh, a few months ago people came around and wanted to learn how to play GameX, that I can't remember what it's called, Right. that I'd done a video for, yes, yeah. and Aquasphere that you'd done a video for. Right, right. So some people in one room sat and watched my video while we sat in the other room watching your video. Okay. <laughs> because, <laughs> and it might sound yep. crazy, but watching Rodney's video of how to play Aquasphere was shorter and guaranteed to be more accurate yeah. than anybody standing and actually teaching the video in person. That, 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 that person. I can confirm. Yes. Like, even if, if some of our longer videos, like mm -hmm. say via Robinson Crusoe, which for me was about 45 minutes, that's still Short Much shorter than, than sitting there and reading the entire rule book yeah. yourself and then translate that information. So And it's structured and it's, it's yeah. accurate and everything else. So. I will follow up with another one about the videos. Different people do it in different ways. So, for instance, my wife doesn't like some of your styles. Yes. So there's too much information. Mm -hmm. Right. <coughs> yeah. So, sometimes it's easier if I find out one of these contents into five minutes of state that it does quick introduction on what the rules look like. Kind of an overview of, yeah. 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 They explain that what happens, but not give enough detail to actually to play on your own. And then we can go and start playing. And right. Yeah. With you kind of filling in the gaps for her type thing. Yeah. yeah. When I when I started doing videos because um, Roddy was, was was so good quality wise, and I tried for I don't know if I told you this story, and I tried filming videos like that, and it was awful. I, I had cards that weren't at a perfect angle, and I'm a perfectionist, and I was yeah, like, yeah. well, this is awful. How can I do this so it looks good? Oh, I'll do digital animations, and then 80 hours later, I created a <laughs> yes. five-minute video. But this is why my earlier videos were five to six minutes digitally animated rules overview videos. If I'd have done full rules videos, it would take me one no, month forever. to create yeah. one video. Yeah. So I did the overview videos. I don't really do them much anymore. I still do if the publisher asks, but right. I, I prefer doing full rules videos. But there's, a place. there's a place for this so, too, right? So my yeah. one for the gallerist is seven minutes, yeah. and your one for the gallerist is... 70, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> like so 30, if you just, 30 minutes if you just yeah. want an overview. an overview of, right, that's roughly how it goes, yeah. but if you actually want to learn how to play in full, you can get both. Yeah. And then both have a, have a place. Yes? I have two questions. Sure. So my first one is, when you're explaining a game, um, should you at any point Oh, that's great. I actually have that written down here, too, um, as, as just a, as a bonus tip about whether or not you do that. Um, we might have some different answers here. Do I think, think it depends game? on the game. It depends yeah. on the game. I'm actually asking because my cousin and I both teach games. Yes. And I refuse to give help to strategy because yes. I feel like it leads to the issue. Yeah. And yeah. he feels like it's necessary, certain strategies are necessary to help people understand the direction to go in the game. Because mm. otherwise, I, 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 I think yeah. it's like games that have asymmetrical player powers and stuff, it's often kind of useful to say that power is designed to key into this strategy for it. You're good thing. at doing You're that. good at doing that yeah. strategy type thing. But it really does depend on the game. But other yeah. games, depends on the game. a kind of big part of that of the game is choosing what strategy you're going to do and someone dictating that to you kind of detracts from the game. I think that's so the case. I, I don't think you can, depend on the I don't game. think you can dictate. I think if you're going to give, uh, it's more like, um, here's something to consider. 
here's a thought. It's because if you soon you start dictating, there's going to be some people who either mm -hmm. feel like, well, this person's getting an advantage because they're getting some strategy yeah. advice, or don't tell me what to do. I want to figure it myself or whatever. You have to read the table a little bit, but I will often drop in little reminders along the mm. way. That's sometimes a bit more about rules than it is strategy, but if I can see someone maybe missing something that could be obvious, I won't point out the obvious, it's more like I'll point out, and don't forget, that there's also a rule that allows you to collect this important resource that is used for this later, just because maybe they've just forgotten something, you know what I mean? But um, that is a tough one because it will depend a little bit on the game and the temperament yeah. of the players. You can and always just ask, I mean. Um, you can always, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> just ask. Just, in very much the case, if, if somebody, yeah. if, I can't remember an example of when I've done this, but uh, it's just the case that if they're sort of umming and ahhing about, say, three possible actions they could take, I could just say to them, well, would it help if I told you what I might do? Right. Yeah. That, I mean, yeah. Oh, I won't do it in the explanation. I won't do it. I mean, unless there was some, like I can think of a game, Blood Rage, some of you may or may not be familiar with, but there is a particular strategy called the Loki strategy, which is quite popular and trips people up often in their first games. I might drop it in after the rules teach. I might just make a quick mention of something like that. Well, in a game but. like, a uh, party game like Avalon, for example, especially when you're trying to get people to play roles after yes. the explanation, you can always tax on it, you're this person, you might want to do this. He just gave it away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yes. <laughs> if there's an option with the game of doing a stripped down version, perhaps, I mean, the, the first few times I play Avalon with a new, uh, a new group, particularly with my family, we will just completely ignore the roles, for example, and just play a basic version and introduce them gradually. And some games will have that option. That's possibly the preferred way if it's the first time or second time. Yeah. So, my second question yes. then is um, we've all done this, you teach a game, and halfway through it, you realize you're playing a Sure. Yeah. So at that point, a lot of times I do, I'll, I'll ask the table what they would like to do, and we'll either say, okay, we're going to keep playing it wrong because the system's been abused now. And right, not yes. Not abuse it. Do you think it's better to do that or to say, okay, one member's okay with it, we want to actually feel that the game is supposed to be played like correctly? I like doing both. Yeah, yeah, it depends on the game. I've I'm also depends restarted. On the rule. Um, I think it depends on the people. Yeah, yeah restarts it, are possible if it's, if it's early enough. It's all about what people yeah. want to do, really. Yeah. If, if, if you talk to the table, just kind of go, okay, sorry, you know, mistakes happen, yeah. and just discuss how you want to proceed. Generally, I don't think there's a better I think, or yeah. worse option, really, in that situation. People want the perception of fairness, I think, ultimately, yeah. right? So I think, yeah, you, you probably read the situation and go, well, at this point, this person has taken advantage of this rule over and over and over again the whole game. Ever, no one else has had a chance to, and maybe won't get to. At that point, I might just say, okay, you've had your chance to have fun with that rule, now we're going to play it properly, you know, to balance things yeah. out. Or if it's everyone's kind of all equally been doing it yeah. wrong, then I might go, well, we can all just decide as a group here, what do we want to do, you yeah. know? So it's, it's a good thing to bring up, though, because it does happen, and you might yeah, face it. Me. It's good yeah, to be prepared yeah. for it. Yeah. <laughs> Having the catch-all phrase, let's call that the practice guy. Yeah, yeah, let's put that. <laughs> Again, that's where the humor, I think, can yeah, diffuse yeah, yeah. a difficult situation. A little bit of fun, yeah. there, a little laugh at it. Oh, we goofed here. Well, we were playing, uh, the first time we played Agra was at the end of a four-day gaming weekend. It was about 10 o'clock at night. Probably not the right time to play one of the heaviest games that came <laughs> right. out. None of us had played before, and we all learned to play together from the rulebook. Yes. It was great. Yeah, we liked great. it. But three hours in, we read a rule and went, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> nope. I've forgotten this. At the end of your turn, you can deliver to the king without taking the action to do so. Oh, if we'd have been doing that, the game would have been over an hour ago. Right. What, what did we do? And we, we decided from that point on to start doing it. Yeah. So <laughs> Just it, so you could go to bed eventually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was about 1.30 in the morning. Right. And then we played again the next morning straight away. Um, in the right way. Probably. Yes, yeah. the right way. Yeah. We got another rule. Well, you know, no better way to learn a rule than to get it wrong and then yeah, find yeah, it. Yeah, I'll yeah. never forget yeah. after that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, there was a, there was a uh, this, this is going back 12 or so years now. Uh, and I've had a games weekend. This is when I lived in Hertfordshire. So it was a long time ago. A friend of mine came around. We were playing Imperial. The original version, not Imperial 2030. And the guy went, well, he was playing Britain and he was taxing the seas. And well, he can't do that. He can't put tax discs in the seas. He went, yeah, that's how the game works. He went, no, no, you can't. I've been playing the game for six months. You can't do that. Okay. Oh, yeah, you can. Huh? Oh, you can. <laughs> I've been playing the game wrong for six yeah, months. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he was like, okay, right. And I'll never forget that. <laughs> I, I think that's a big part of like, how house rules uh, get so, developed. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Well, I was just going to think, I think house rules is a good thing to mention. Some people will have house rules that they've come up with, custom rules when they play. I think it's very important if you have some house rules used to playing. I do like to highlight that. I'll, I'll the people that. I'm playing with. 
um, because otherwise they might leave the table thinking this is how it works. They go to a different mm -hmm. group and they, you know, they'll argue vehemently. No, I know yeah. for sure this is a rule. Rodney and, taught me this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so End up that's with the table. Is that situation. the Rodney gets twenty extra points? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's. <laughs> okay. well, I have yeah, yeah. have to roll dice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, any other questions or, or questions? Yes, back. Right. Yeah. Just, just quickly, Vast is a game where everyone plays by entirely, well, not entirely different rules, but they have their own very specific rule sheet in this particular game. So it's very asymmetrical. What I'm doing is totally different than what Paul's right. doing. We have different objectives. Yeah. We have different rules to follow and so on. So yeah, how do you have teach you it? Taught it? Well, how I teach it, I just leave it on the shelf and I never play it. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that, but that is a good question. Um, yeah. Um, have any quick thoughts I've, on that? I've before? never tried to teach a game as asymmetrical as that. The most I've done is uh, two-player asymmetrical, where I'm playing one of the roles, so I only teach the one that they need to know. I think really the best thing to do in that situation would be to kind of do the homework situation of send them the video saying, right, you're going to be playing this role. I don't think there is a video for that one. one. I know, because yeah. I'm getting asked to make one. <laughs> I think, you know, I think my, my, my thought on that one for Vast is you've got to have everyone equally as interested in playing that game as you are. Yeah. It's the only way, because that, that game is just going to be a slog. And I think sometimes you just have to know, we all have homework to do in this one. So don't break this one out with someone who's just new in, well, I mean, again, there's always exceptions. But I wouldn't break it out with someone brand new in the hobby or someone who's just dipped a toe in even. I, I would go with my core group with this one and go, okay, here's a rather complex game. Yeah. Are we all ready to dig in here for a couple of hours? Because you're each going to have to read this sheet and they'll come together and we'll make this work. Yeah. I think that's maybe the best tip I can give. I mean, games like, like Sidereal Confluence, Terra Mystica, or things like that, where there are asymmetrical powers, and I'm going to refer back to my experience yes. again because it's, it's, you know, <laughs> it was so horrible it's actually frightened me. Um, this is therapy. For, this for is, this is therapy. Yeah. Thank you for this. Yes. This is really good. <laughs> but one thing that he did wrong is he started explaining some of the asymmetrical powers before we'd even understood the core. General. General. Yeah, yeah. So, end cover everything that applies to everybody, and yeah, then yeah. say at the end, right, you know that bit I mentioned about, right, right for you it's different. Yeah, but yeah. True. Wait until the end. For Give everyone things. a foundation yeah. and then do the branching But as you say, for Vast, is there nothing in common for all players? There's a few little things, but wow. it's like half a yeah. page. Right. I think the general rules are something like, you're all sitting at a table together, okay. you're all playing a game, <laughs> those are the general rules, yes. <laughs> You should play with humans. Uh, that's generally it. I think my, my uh, sort of experience with this is that one of my favourite games of all time was uh, Chaos in the Old World, mm -hmm. and so oh, I do try and very break that out for, for groups uh, every, every so often. And, and um, I think the difficulty with that one that, that's not only got different mechanics for different uh, gods, you've actually got different victory conditions, yes. different means of winning. Yeah. Um, and I think you, you're kind of on that very grey area from the comment from earlier about. Well, you actually kind of need to give them strategy this is, as well. I was just about to say this yeah. exact same thing, because Chaos in the Order, I've only played it a few times, but if you don't tell people to run away from Corn, Corn will just win, yeah, absolutely, easily. Yeah. And then people go away saying, oh, the game's not very good, because Corn always wins. If they know that you run away from Corn, then Corn very, the, very the game wins works. To be clear, yeah. this is not an agriculture game. Either. No, no, no. <laughs> it's a different spelling of Corn, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, th I think um, the, the only way I've really sort of tackled that one is that you have to boil it down to what are the uh, shared mechanics, and once you've covered that and everybody's happy with that, yeah. you can start to then think about and touch on what are the, the, the specific individual ones. But with that one, I think, um, I mean, I, I haven't come across fast, but um, with, with Cast in the Old World, the, the trick I do generally is I don't dish out the characters at the start. Oh, right. I actually give everybody a rough overview of each of the individual specialist powers. Right. Um, and then we do the characterization mm -hmm. because um, that way at the very least I think you, you're, not, you're not going to be able to balance what other it. people are going to be exactly. trying to do to you as well. And what you said about like, sort of having to run away and all the rest of it. Um, it, some of these things actually it's not just important for the person playing that character or that role to know, it's important really that everybody has an idea. Yeah. And that, is, is that something similar yeah. with Vast? Is it? No, yeah, that definitely be true with Vast too. Yeah. They all interrelate to each other too as well. Yeah. So I suppose the, the problem there is do, are you in a danger of actually uh, basically teaching four different games at the same time. You are, or, which is um, why you just have to be prepared. That's the kind of game yeah. it is. You're, you're in for the long haul. There, yeah, right? it's just one of those where it's a necessary evil, unfortunately. Yeah. I know one thing 
may be slightly similar, is the first time I sat down to play Space Cadets, the base game. I think there was like six players, and he was like, right, so you, I now need to speak to you about how that bit works, five minutes later. Now I need to speak to you about how that yeah. bit works, five minutes, we're bored. Yeah. It, it just didn't, it, it didn't work, even though the roles go round and we'll have to do that. The fact that it was like a few minutes with each player individually, yeah, well, that, yeah, that was then that you've was also got the issue that, like, you're not going to be playing that role until yeah. five rounds you've forgotten. time. Yeah. You've forgotten by Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So. Sometimes it's just tough. Yeah. Just play D&D &D instead. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, seriously. I, I, I don't think you can. Yeah, one session. Sometimes yeah. you might just have to have kind of a learning session. Yeah. And, and we'll come back and play now. We all understand and we've sort of fiddled with the pieces a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Still a game like Arkham Horror and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, I haven't played that one yet, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. Yeah. Um, I think it's a good question. I think it's a good Sure, yeah. I suppose a lot of this depends on whether your gaming group is one that gets together regularly or whether it's one that you can only sort of cobble together every six months. I mean, um, if you get together regularly, you can afford to do that session zero and say, well, okay, we're going to basically do what I did earlier. We're going to take everything out. We're going to show what everything does. Not with the intention of playing it. We'll put it away and play something else then so that next time we, we can have a full game of it. And I suppose that's the ideal, really, but not everybody's going to have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. We're just about a time. We've got two minutes left. Any any last? Yeah, we got one here. And let's see what the back. What is the issue with games? You you're trying to teach a game, and somebody else at the table already has already played it. Mm -hmm. You're teaching the role. You're deliberately leaking out bits. That mm -hmm. you the backseat know, teacher. Aren't worth teaching yeah. right now, and they keep chiming in with those those hidden rules because they want to explain everything. Well, I have the solution. How do you deal with that person? Duct tape. <laughs> this yeah. look, you know what? I'd end up with like just big red mark <laughs> over my mouth. We've had no trouble uh, filling up the time here. We had, there's, I had a little section here on, on being a good learner. And one of those things is what if, what if you're sitting at a table and you know the rules and someone else is teaching and you're just chomping at the bits to say something about, oh, you, they're going to forget this thing. Yeah, I, I don't know what you can do aside from saying, uh, I have some friends, for example, who've just said, okay, fine, and they just backed off and just let the other person go yeah. ahead. Because they're just so frustrated to have, sort of be competing you know, for the voice, it, right? It, 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 it's difficult to do, and it all depends on the situation and the people involved and everything else. But there needs to be this unwritten agreement at the start of the game that you're the one going to be teaching it. Okay, Dave, you know how to play, but if you can let me teach, and if if you know, I think if I miss right. something, out, yeah. if I may, if I say something wrong, please interrupt me. But otherwise, please yes. let me. Got to say that at the start. Uh, I think so. I think you, you do have to kind of cut it off early because if you don't cut it off early, it will keep happening, mm -hmm. right? To the point where it's too late. And yeah. It could be a little uncomfortable, but that's probably better than having two voices competing for attention. Yeah. You know? So just say, I'm not awful person. I always try to. Yeah, me too. I, yeah, I do as well, by the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here, do this. <laughs> 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 He's a little trick, a little That's great. Yeah, right. Look fact. at the shiny toy. Yeah, the shiny toy. Shiny toy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had a question at the back there. Um, yeah, it's kind of related to the. So, if you've got secret victory conditions, mm. um, do you advise? Because you can have victory in a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. When you've got yeah. things that it's important that other people don't know that they know. Yep. So you, you first. So both, both of it. those games, and uh, I'm thinking of a Civ game called Golden Ages or something like that. Back of the rule book has the cards with a list of them all and what they do. So say you've each got secret objectives. Obviously, I can't look at them or give you any advice. But if you're thinking of the winter tiles in Keyflower, he, here is the book. Have a look at this. If you, if you don't know what one means. Ask me, don't worry about it, especially the winter tiles in Keyflower. I'm not going to get much of an advantage over it. Um, but yeah, if it's in the rule book, great. Just pass that around and let them look. Yeah, if I think not, also obviously. a lot of the time if it's not in the rule book, it will be on like BGG. So you, if you do the preparation and research beforehand, you could probably find just like a player aid thing that you can give them once you've kind of got to the end of the explanation. Right, everyone read this. It'll help you know what your goal is. 